I'm going to put the transmission up there now. And I just, since I cleaned this thing out really good, I cleaned all the grease off these shafts on here and I just put some new bearing grease on there. Not that that's what you're supposed to use, it doesn't matter because when you, I just don't want to dry so that when I put the regular chassis grease on that it doesn't, uh, that it's not dry, that, that it'll, it'll push on through there. Anyway, I also greased these little fingers that pull the the uh, the bearing, the throw out bearing. I grease the back side of those, and this has to be leaning forward like this, so that it will um, so that it will go over the top of this thing here of the throw out bearing. And I grease the back side of these where those fingers match up at on the other side. I grease both of those on the back. If you don't do that, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. It's just because uh, you can't really grease it once the thing is, is in use. So it probably doesn't really matter. I just felt like it should be done. But we are going to be wrestling with that thing to get those fingers to slide right over the top of this and they just barely will fit right over the top of that while you're wrestling this transmission into place and while they're going over the top of that they'll start going back down so it's uh, it's a little tricky but that's what you gotta do I just spent quite a while getting this transmission hooked up it's not hooked up but I got it on the way now and I had a seven inch gap right now I got about two and a half inch gap between the front bell housing and the back bell housing and one thing I had to do was adjust my jack to where I had to climb up there and go through the shifter hole and measure between the the two bell housing halves up there and do the same thing down here on the bottom and on both sides and I had to try to keep that measurement pretty close and then I put a come along through the inspection cover here and over here to the I-beam on the steering I-beam there and I had to put some tension on it and then I would raise this jack up and down up and down up and down a whole bunch of times until one time it seemed like something clicked and so I started pushing the jack with my feet and I got it to start moving forward and so now I'm up here and it's raining of course it's Memorial Day it has to rain sorry about being a pessimist but gosh it is what it is anyway I'm getting that that is not what I want to shine the light on. Here it is. I'm getting that piece right there, that little dog that goes behind the, the throw out bearing. And this one up here. I got to line those up. I had to go out and turn the engine by hand because this thing went sideways just a little bit and it wasn't quite square, that throw out bearing and one of those dogs was hitting the throttle bearing and the other one had about half an inch of space so I had to turn the engine just a little bit to get the top of those pretty close to even. Well now I can slide this thing in. There was no rain in the forecast today. The rain was for Friday and Saturday. Today Sunday and there was no rain in the forecast at all. They don't know what they're talking about. Never did. Anyway um, I'm going to go on ahead and, and start pulling this in. I can't do it on camera because I need, well, i got to have one hand with a flashlight and another hand with, on the come along. I'm on my way in now. I had a little bit of trouble catching a spline. Um, I was using some longer bolts and pulling it in and it kept getting tight. <clears throat> it kept getting too tight and it wouldn't uh, go. I'd raise the jack up and down a little bit and it still wouldn't go. So I backed the bolts off 
just enough that I can just barely turn that shaft with the pliers with a uh, channel lock and then when I heard it catch it seemed like it was a distinct catch and so I started tightening the bolts and then the bolts started to pull it on in and so it's pulling it on in now and now I'm using spacers on the bolt to pull it on in some more that's because I'm I don't have someone else to go in the back and wrestle with the thing and push on it so I'm just going to use longer bolts and pull them through until we get it close enough to put the original bolts in now it's time to adjust the clutch I just have to show you how I already adjusted it off camera but anyway the clutch adjusting screw is right here and this is different than on my other videos on adjusting clutches this is an easy adjust clutch or quick adjust or I don't know what name they give it but anyway that bolt underneath that blue thing there or I mean on top of that blue thing this this bolt right here has a spring-loaded collar on it and we have to push that collar in and then turn it but first before we go there let me show you what I got to do up on top out here on the engine this is a Detroit engine the clutch job is the same on any truck same procedure but the uh, Detroit engine might be a little bit different and you see I've got a place there where I've marked it clutch I painted some white out on the harmonic balancer painted a big black line through the center and and it's about an inch away from the end of this marker this uh, piece of metal here it was right on it when I marked it but um, apparently the clutch wasn't really centered on the bottom the adjusting part that's just for me for my reference and that's what I like to do to have so that next time I adjust the clutch as long as I can see that mark up there close to that end then I know I'm in position because I usually do it alone I don't have somebody to bump the engine for me now you gotta press the clutch pedal down close to the floor it doesn't have to be all the way to the floor but close to it and what I use this is what I call a little lap board just a little piece of scrap lumber I threw in here a few years back out of the garage when I sit on the bunk and uh, just set that on my knees and, and eat a, on it or whatever anyway you, you gotta push the, the clutch pedal down and then get this board in here wedged under the seat you may have to adjust the seat or, or find you a board that will work for you, a piece of 2 by 4 whatever. First of all, before I do that, we're looking for about 2 inches of free play. Or however much free play you want, but you, you really should have 2 inches so when it gets less than 1 inch then you know it's getting close to time to adjust it. Well we are adjusted, but I'm going to go ahead and go through the procedure anyway to show how to do it. It's a 5 8 socket, and we're going to tighten it. When, when your clutch pedal is too high you want to tighten this so you turn it to the right or clockwise just a few turns like that and then you go up and you check your free play we're going to have more free play than what we had now We got more free play, maybe three inches. Now 
Now I gotta loosen it, of course. I don't know if you're getting a good view of that. Let me shine a light in there. That's what we're working on right there. Gotta push that in. I think I did about six the first time. I don't know, I didn't count them. I'm gonna go up and check. We're right back to where I started, my two inch free play. 